Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentle them, welcome in to another Lost Ark class guide. Today we're going to be talking about the War Dancer, uh, which is the Battle Master in other regions. And it is one of the martial arts class. What this guide will be is a overview of the mechanics, the game design, and the function for the class. Uh, just generally what you can expect at endgame, uh, how the class is played, and generally what tools are available in your tool belt for you to play with and customize. It will not be an advanced guide or a meta guide or a how to play best or what skills are best or tier list kind of video, uh, mainly because the meta between the existing regions, Japan, Korea, and Russia, are quite disparate as it is now. Uh, and I'm guessing that they're going to be rather different as well when it comes to Western Europe and North America, as it tends to be. So I'm sure that we will see some emergent gameplay. We'll see some different play styles coming out. Um, so as people get their hands on War Dancer, we'll see some different things. So I'm just going to go over what the class is, how it works, what the game design is, and then generally uh, what you have available. And that's where we're going to get. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. So let's start with a basic attack. Um, this is a, a, an attack that everyone has. Not every class uses their basic attack. Hers is just this hit chain, which is pretty cool. I mean, I think it's pretty thematic. Some classes, like I said, it will be irrelevant, um, but for some, it, it is nice to kind of know what the basic attack is. The next is the movement ability. War Dancer has, honestly, probably one of the better ones in the game. It's a six second cooldown. It's very fast, and it's got like a medium distance to it. Super snappy and responsive. Um, it, it's not, I mean, it's closer to one of the shorter ones. I mean, the, the, the cooldowns on the movement abilities range from five to 10 seconds. So it's on the shorter side and it's very reactive and responsive. There's not really any nuance to it. It's just reliable. Um, the identity for the War Dancer, as it is the female counterpart to the Striker, they have the same identity and it is the elemental system. Straightforward. All you do is you deal damage with abilities and you build up elemental power. And then once you get enough to get an orb, it will unlock your ability to spend those orbs on elemental attacks. As you come down here, you'll see your, uh, it says ult here in the translation. I'm not sure what they'll call it in the Western version, um, but it is, uh, it'll say ult or whatever it is. All five of these are spenders for your elemental orbs. Some require one, some require two. They're called mystic orbs here, um, but you, you, can, you build those up with attacks and then you spend them on elemental attacks. And that's how it works. And you can, develop a different build. I mean, obviously every class in the game has eight slots for, for the most part, and then they can slot in eight abilities. How many spenders you have versus how many builders you have is part of the striker slash war dancer design. Um, and there are class engravings that can modify that. So you can have more spenders or less spenders, um, depending on what you build you go with. But these are all very powerful attacks that are super fun to use. Uh, and they end up being really, really cool when you get them off. Um, but it requires you to build up and play with it. But there is play styles that don't use builders or spenders at all. Uh, it just use only builders. So that's that ability there. Um, then we'll go over the awakening abilities because there's two of them. Um, every class has two. You'll get one when you get to soft cap at level 50. And then you'll have to do a, a four hour quest to unlock the second one. But you unlock it server wide. Um, and these are your ultimate ability. You get to equip one at a time. You have a, an awakening slot here. So you slot one of these in and you'll have it there. Uh, you would do this in PvP and PvE. Uh, but the first one's called Instant Rampage. And this one is very straightforward. It's just a full channel. And she just she just goes berserk mode. And she just starts attacking. She's got her channel. And it's just a big channel in front of her. Lots of attacks into one final attack. Uh, does a bunch of damage. Uh, and then you have uh, some pretty strong impairment on as well. Plus super armor. So that's the first one. Uh, if we reset, we can go to the second one. This one is probably used more just because it's a little bit more flexible. Uh, you don't have to aim it uh, as much as just an AoE around her. She just goes down, puts a little arena down, and then bounces around and follows with a big AoE. Uh, great amounts of damage as well. Um, and while you're in it, you receive less damage, which is nice. You can use it, you know, if you feel like a boss is about to hit you with something and you want to just attack through it. You're taking a lot less damage and you have a big AoE on it, which is super useful. So I think a lot of people end up using uh, Pole, as it's called, but I'm sure it'll have a different name. Uh, has the most. Um, now, for keeping this like a short overview for the class, I think that the last thing to cover is going to be the class engravings. Um, there's going to be uh, tons of guides and details on what to use on each ability, which to take, you know, how to set up your tripods, what runes you want, all of that. This is going to be just a starter guide for the class. However, I think it is important for the end game builds 
to understand what your two class engravings are. So one of the end game customization systems is engravings. You will get engravings from your accessories, from your ability stone, and then from your two engraving slots. When you put these together, they unlock passives and benefits, and every class has access to general or combat engravings, which are listed here. There's a bunch of them. They do all kinds of different things, and you'll put them all together in different ways to make your build. However, every class also has access to two class engravings that are unique only to that class that only they can use, and they generally tend to be very powerful and very build-defining. In fact, most classes use only one of them, um, as they're usually polar opposites, and they change how you play the character. So with that in mind, I think it's important to know what these are as you get to endgame, so you know how your class might change uh, when you get towards that later stage content. The first one is additional inner key, as it shows here on the Russian client on my Mord answer. The avatar receives additional chakra elements, which is your elemental orbs here, so you can actually get an additional orb to store up on. And you get more damage on your spenders uh, for each active orb that you have. So if you, the more you have, the more your spenders become, um, which is makes it just so much stronger to have them. And then you can get different ways to build more. You can get some of the, the unlocks on these abilities that give you more elemental uh, energy with it. So you can build up more and spend more. And that way you can actually have maybe instead of one spender, you can have two or three. Uh, and still have enough builders to uh, go into that. So this is the build that plays more on the elemental spender side, on the ultimates uh, that you have. Um, these here, and that's one of them. And then the other one is the complete opposite. And you'll see this theme throughout most of the class engravings in the game. This one's Beginner's Mind. Your damage overall is just flat increased. Uh, at, highest, at max rank, it's 25%, which is bonkers. Um, but you lose the ability to accumulate energy elements. So you lose your passive entirely, which means your whole bar is just going to be builders, but your overall damage is greatly increased. So you say, either I want to spend, I want to kind of specialize in using elemental attacks, my big spenders, or I want no spenders and just have my builders um, as part of my gameplay. So you can see how different those are. But that's Ward Answer. Uh, they're probably one of the more technical classes in the game not the most complicated but uh there's a lot of nuance in lining up your buffs they have a lot of self buffs and party buffs that can be very effective they have short durations so you want to make sure that you're um using your buffs and then using all your abilities within the time window is kind of the war dancer meta uh how it's played um and then in pvp since they have very short ranged attacks um it can be a little bit more challenging to use them in pvp just because you have to position properly, uh, you have to be in the right space at the right time, and you have to avoid getting hit by things because they don't have as many uh, immunities as, say, like a Deathblade would. So that's the ward answer. I hope this helps you decide whether you're going to play it or not. I hope you, uh, you know, have fun with the Western release, and we'll jump on to the next class. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon-exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.